Hi everybody, this is Dr. Fig from Fig Natural Health. Today we are talking about creosotum. Cholera and phantom. Profuse vomiting. Cadaverous smelling stools. Hemorrhagic diathesis. Small wounds bleed profusely, like phosphorus. Acrid, fetid, decomposed mucus secretions. Sometimes alterating, bleeding, and malignant. Gums are painful, dark red or blue. The teeth decay as soon as they come in. Sudden urging to urinate during the first sleep, which is very profound. And that means just during sleep in the first part of the night. This curious substance seems to act chiefly upon the mucous membranes, producing profuse and offensive secretions and ulcerations which greatly depress vitality. This is especially true of the genital organs of the female. The leucorrhea is putrid, acrid, corrosive, staining the linen yellow. The parts with which the discharge come into contact itch and burn, while scratching does not relieve but inflames the parts. This remedy has a tendency to hemorrhages which are often very obstinate. The hemorrhages occur with leucorrheal trouble. They are in intermittent, will almost stop, then freshen up again and again. This is often the case with the lochia after confinement, when the choice may lie between these three remedies, creosote, brustox, and sulfur. The other symptoms must be decide between them. This ulceration may be found in cancer of the uterus, and then creosote will often be of great value. I have no doubt that many cases which degenerate into cancer might be prevented by its timely use. In some cases, there is awful burning in the pelvis, as of red-hot coals, with ditch discharge of clots in smell foul-smelling blood. I see that Guernsey recommends it in cancer of the mammae, saying it is hard, bluish-red, and covered with scurvy protuberances. I have never so used it, but in corrosive leucorrheas and ulcerations I have with great satisfaction. I generally use it in the 200th with simply tepid water injections for cleanliness. There's perhaps no remedy that has a more decided action upon the gums, not even mercury, than this one. It is not used often enough in painful dentition. The gums are very painful, swell, look dark red or blue, and the teeth decay almost as soon as they are born. A child that has a mouth full of decayed teeth with spongy, painful gums will find its best friend in creosote. Cholera and phantom in such children is of common occurrence and is of a very severe type, for the vomiting is incessant and the stool's cadaverous smelling. Never forget creosote and cholera and phantom, which seems to arise from painful dentition or in connection with it, for I have seen some of the finest effects ever witnessed from any remedy from this one. I have used it here also in the 200th. Creosote is also one of our best remedies in other kinds of vomiting, in the vomiting of pregnancy and in that of other intractable diseases of the stomach, known as gastromalacia. I do not know any characteristic indications for it here, but should I find the troubles before mentioned in part or whole, such as corrosive leucorrhea or the hemorrhages, or a general hemorrhagic tendency, small wounds inclined to bleed profusely, like lachesis and like phosphorus, I would feel confident of creosote. Creosote has strong characteristics in regard to urination. First, it has copious, pale urine. Second, they can't go quickly enough. The urging is so great or, su or sudden, like petrosilinum. Third, the child wets the bed during the first sleep, which is very profound, and they can hardly wake it up from the sleep, like sepia. 
can only urinate while when lying down, like Zincum metallicum, which is only when sitting with the bent back, so not like Zincum metallicum. To, rec to recapitulate, bad teeth and gums, quote, from way back, fetid corrosive discharges, great debility, and hemorrhagic tendency should always call to mind this remedy. Thank you everyone for listening, and you have a wonderful day.